Hello and welcome back to the next part of our chicken coop door build. Now this is the part I've been talking about um, all along that might seem a bit daunting if you've not done um, coding and electronics before. But um, let me reassure you that uh, before this project I never used an Arduino and uh, within three weeks I was able to get uh, enough knowledge to make this thing work. So hopefully with my instructions this will be just a kind of a copy paste and just uh, plug some wires so not too difficult. So first I'm going to go over the components list and then uh, I'll show you a digital version of what we're going to be installing and then we'll actually get into plugging the wires up. So let's get to it. The first component is the Arduino itself. Now this is the Arduino Uno and you can get this directly from the Arduino website. I think total was somewhere around $34, something like that. Next we have a 24 volt DC motor and it has a gear head on it so uh, that's very important if you want the um, component to lock into place either up or down so make sure it's a gear head. This was on Amazon I think it was less than $10. The next component is the L298N uh, and this is a motor controller. What this does, uh, technically it's a, a dual H bridge, which means uh, that the outputs here, it can run two different motors in either uh, direction. So in for our case, it's up and down on the motor. So without this, you can only go one direction. And it does take uh, up to, what was it, 35 volts, I believe. Now, one thing I need to mention, when this is running at uh, 2 amps, it has about a 5 volt voltage drop. So let's say you put in a 20 amp, I mean a 20 volt uh, power supply, well then that means you've got 15 volts to work with, not enough to pull up the weight of our chicken coop door. So what I did was went with uh, 24 volt and 1 amp. So the voltage drop is only about 2 or one and a half. So um, basically we're still working with like 22 volts. So I recommend uh, getting that power supply. Now what do I mean by power supply? Basically it's just one of these typical standard um, AC to DC adapters. For instance this one's 9 volts at 150 milliamps. So that would not run our uh, motor controller but this I believe would run the Arduino, which needs uh, 9 volts. Anyway, you can go on Amazon and just type in um, Arduino motor, uh, Arduino power supply, and you'll probably get a 9 volt uh, result there. And uh, so then with the motor controller, you'd find one that's 24 volt, 1 amp. Now you're going to have to buy two uh, reed switches. So remember, we put ours in there uh, to make the connection for when it's up and when it's down. As far as other components go, you're going to need three 170 ohm resistors. You're going to need a photo resistor. I believe this one is a 1K or a 5K. You can adjust in code, so either one of those will work. You're also going to have one of these um, power supply adapters. So it goes from a power supply plug in to a breadboard. I forget what they're called exactly, but you'll need one of those. You're going to need some wire and a spool. Um, I got red and black. Then you can get uh, wires and a ribbon. And so when you need them, you just pull them off. Um, now you're going to need uh, two different types here. This type, see, has uh, the metal pin on both sides. You're also going to need the kind that has one metal pin and one not metal pin. So that concludes the part list for everything we need to get this thing up and running. So let's talk about the cost so far. Arduino was uh, $34. The uh, H bridge was $3. The motor was, I'm going to say $7. Um, the two power supplies were $5 and $7. Um, all the resistors, wire, um, reed switches, the rest of the stuff uh, was about $22 with shipping. 
And then the, the wood we used, I believe, was somewhere around uh, $10 with the screws. So whatever that comes up to be, it's less than 200 bucks for sure, which is what uh, the professional grade um, doors cost if you buy them yourself, or if you buy them instead of making it yourself. Okay, let's go over to the computer and we will look into the actual design uh, digital version before we go in and actually build it ourselves. So let's get to it. Okay, let's go over our digital build here. Now, I first want to point out that this chip up here is obviously not the L298N. It's just kind of representing uh, that uh, chip. So I'll go over that in the actual build of how to get that wired up. So you'll notice that we have uh, those resistors here, the three of them. We've also got that photo resistor. And then these are going to represent our read switches that are built into the door. And then this is going to be the power supply that goes to the uh, H-bridge and then to the motor. So, first of all, we're going to be attaching 5 volts down here to the breadboard, which is the red here. And then the ground goes to the black, which is uh, right there. So, next, we're going to be taking this AO. It's right here on the end. And that wire is going to go to this resistor, which then goes over here to ground. And then it's going to go to that photoresistor, which goes to power. So we can consider that to be like one circuit there. It's kind of looped together. So next we're going to move over where it says pin 2. And notice that we used AO over here. This is an analog, as you can see right here, analog in. And then over here, these are digital pins. So it's important that we use um, this because um, on off, of course, is digital. And the value from the sun is going to be uh, varying. So it's not always just on and off. So that's why we're using this value here. So over here, we're using pin 2 on the digital side to go to the resistor, which then goes to ground. And then the other side of this goes to our read switch and then to um, the positive here. And that's one circuit or one component. So now we move on and we do the exact same thing to pin 4 here in the digital. Goes to ground and then goes to the read switch and then back to the power here or the, the positive. Now to wire up the H bridge the L298N. We're going to have uh, pin 8 goes up here and that's going to go uh, to one of the inputs. Um, and then 9 also goes as an input. And then 10 is, see the little swiggly line right there next to 10? That is a um, pulse wave modulation. I think that's what it is. Um, that means that you can actually adjust the speed of the motor based upon the value coming in to, uh, or out of 10 here. So we'll talk about that again here in a bit. So let's go over to the power supply. Um, the negative goes here, which um, is going to be that uh, breadboard to power supply adapter uh, that I showed you in the component list. And that's going to go to the power, or to the ground, up here on the chip. And then uh, this is going to be our 24 volt 1 amp um, power plug, which goes to the power in. And then uh, there's an out. There's two outs for um, this. So here and here, and that just goes to the motor. And that. Uh, oh, and also you have your power plug here, which this is your USB. And then we're going to be plugging in uh, here once we're done. So that completes the digital look of our um, whole setup. So now let's move on to actually building this thing. Some of this is going to be tedious and hard to see on the board, but I'll do my best to get the camera in uh, focus here. So I've got that adapter for the breadboard, and I'm going to stick that up here in the top, hopefully. Okay. 
in there nice and secure. Like I said, that's going to be where our power supply goes in to run the uh, H-bridge here that runs the motor. So, uh, just like in our diagram, I'm going to use the green, I mean, sorry, the blue and the yellow wires here. And so the back side of this is the actual uh, the pin that goes the inside of that power supply. And so that last hole is the positive, and then the front hole is the negative. So I'm going to plug in there. Very important because you'll notice I have the H bridge here and then I have one here. <laughs> I accidentally put uh, reverse polarity onto this thing. So in other words, 24 volts into the ground and then uh, ground into the 24 and it stopped working. No magic smoke, but it stopped working. Okay, so to get uh, this hooked up into our power, it's down here on the bottom and just take it uh, for granted that the middle is going to be the ground, which is blue, and I'm going to get that stuck in the little hole down here, and then use a screwdriver and cinch that down so the middle is ground. Okay, and now on mine at least, the outside over here is the uh, 24 volt. And so just make sure on yours that you've got the right one. Now, there's also, let me get that one here, there is a pin, or uh, two pins together, and they've got this little separator piece. Pull that out that's next to the, uh, the blue box here. That's where we're going to be using uh, to drive our motor, so just pull that out. Now you'll remember that I had the three wires that were spikes on one side and not on the other. Now it's time to use those. So uh, on the diagram I have the colors wrong, but it's okay. The brown wire is going to go on the very first uh, peg here, next to the blue power supply. Next we're going to use a black wire, and it's going to go on the second peg, pin, whatever they're called. And then we're going to put this red one on the third one. Now remember you will have to remove that little jumper before you can do this. Okay, now with your brown, black, and red wires, we're going to connect them to the Arduino. So the brown wire is pin 10, and that's what controls the speed. And before I said um, that PWM was something else, but it's um, pulse width modulation. Uh, so the, the pulse has a different width. Okay, now we're going to move on to the black one, and that's on pin 9, and the red one, pin 8. So that should complete the H bridge setup. So now let's move on to everything else. So to talk about breadboards, the positive negative here and positive negative here are not connected to anything yet, and they're separate. Also, if you look at this point here and this point here, that's the same point electrically. You can see it's line 19. So those are the same. But if you come over a couple this way, these are not the same as these. So you can put things separate here or together on the same line. So that's just kind of an update on what a breadboard uh, layout is, in case you didn't know already. So I'm going to put my three uh, 470 ohm resistors in here. So the first one I'm going to put about here, it's going to go from the uh, negative ground to just some point up here. The next one is going to be just like that. I'm going to come down a little bit and plop that in here. Okay. Now something I did not mention earlier was the separation of ground for analog and digital. So there's something a little bit different we're going to do here with this other uh, resistor and that's just go like this so it doesn't go to the negative yet okay now let's go ahead and put in our photo resistor now remember this resistor is going to be wired with long wires I guess soldered in 
and it's going to go outside the chicken coop. And that's because you have to have sunlight to it. But just to test this and get it uh, working, we're just going to put it here. So you can tell this piece here is the same electrically as here. So those need to be touching. Now, let's get these all wired up here. So first of all, I'm going to start with the ground for the analog circuit, because remember, it's different. So we're just going to take uh, this ground point on this the last part of the resistor and go over here to the analog ground. Okay. And now, to power this up, the whole thing up, there's a 5 volt right here. And we're going to plug in there, and that's just going to go to the strip 5 volt. So now, everything along this line is going to have 5 volts from the Arduino. So that's important to remember. We also have to link up the, uh, the ground from digital, which is this pin 14, so 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay? And that is going to be the board ground. So now everything on this strip here is going to be ground. Okay, so we're going to deal with the analog circuit first. It's got ground. Now the orange from our diagram earlier is going to go to A0. So that's your analog value from here. Okay, and then we need to power on the photoresistor. So from this back leg, I'm just going to go to the red strip to power that on. And that completes the whole circuit for the analog there. So now we're going to move on to the two read switches. Now you recall that these wires over here come from our switches. So I need to plug in the reds straight up to the power in. So that 5 volt strip. And both of those just plop right in there. And now the uh, black wires, let's do um, the bottom one down here is going to be um, the bottom. So let's go here. All right. And then up here, we've got the other one. So basically those just go to the um, open side of the resistor there. And now we also have to use our green wires to go from that same resistor. And one of these is going to go to number two. And the other one is going to go to number four. And that's it. So it looks kind of complicated and the wires are all jumbled up. Um, so whenever you actually have this finished, you may want to make short wires that attach to um, everything nice and neat. But for now, that's all we have to do. Well, you're still here, which means you must not have found this to be too intimidating. This part was uh, kind of jumbled. So like I said, you may want to um, cut short wires and make it look pretty. Um, so hopefully with the diagram that I showed you, um, you'll be able to get this no problem. Just remember to separate those uh, analog and digital grounds. So in the next video, we're going to be breaking down the code that makes this thing work. So that's going to be lots of fun. Looks like uh, after that, we're going to have one more video, and that's just going to show you the final product of how well it works. It's very exciting. Thanks for watching. If you have some comments to make this build even better, please write them below and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Bye.